Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, all of my beautiful friends from the internet. I am so happy to be back with y'all on another Tuesday evening, and uh, I hope that you are uh, enjoying whatever you're doing uh, on whatever day uh, of or time of the day that you happen to be listening to this episode of the podcast. So before we head into the show, I got a couple things to say. First of all, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and subscribe. Uh, If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please, why wouldn't you just leave us a juicy, juicy review? Uh, It very much helps get the podcast spread, and we can get more people joining our little Reddit club, our little Ask Reddit club. So this is Ask Reddit, or this is uh, Reddit Asks Us, where we read and react to comments from r slash Ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Now, time for the new segment. So I am going to be reading off, uh, so, so... Just to explain this to people, if you like the show, if you listen to the show, what you can do is every week after I've done, after I'm done posting an episode, uh, you can go and comment on my YouTube channel at Reddit Asks Us on YouTube, and you can give us your takes, and I will read them out on the next week's episode. So, with that said, uh, last week's episode was what is a Deep and dark rabbit hole to research when bored. Uh, so we have two responses here. Number one comes from Rusty Augers. Uh, hockey fights from the 80s. Now, this one was interesting to me because modern sports nowadays, like I, I believe this because, and honestly, I think this goes, like I, I can only really speak to basketball, but uh, there was a period of time where basketball and fights in basketball uh, were so much more prevalent and violent than fights that happen in basketball nowadays. And uh, it, <laughs> I think, the, and this is actually true, is that the NBA, there were, prior to, I think it was really the 1970s, and uh, prior to the early 1980s, late 1970s seasons where we had guys like Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and then uh, um, Michael Jordan following that, uh, there was uh, the NBA took a dip in interest because there was so much fighting that happened. There was just brawls that would break out, and they would often be quite violent. Uh, there's funny jokes about this in the movie Semi Pro with uh, uh, Will Ferrell, uh, and it's a uh, it, they kind of poke fun at this idea that uh, there just used to be so many f- f- uh, fights in sports. Uh, now you don't really see that nowadays, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm all for. Uh, I'm low key all for bringing it back. There was that one crazy clip. Not it was a couple, maybe two years ago. Um, and I'm trying to remember as a player from the Detroit Pistons, Sadiq Bay, I think maybe it was, uh, from the Detroit Pistons who tried to fight LeBron, uh, LeBron James tried to like swing at him and stuff. But I'm sure that that is a very dark, deep, deep and dark rabbit hole, uh, because in some ways. Uh, especially in the fighting ways, uh, sports used to be a little bit more entertaining in that respect. Um, next one comes from Vortex, uh, who wished me a happy birthday from last week, so thank you very much. He said uh, that a rabbit hole looking into the internet is looking at people's old YouTube videos. Um, I agree with this one, too, because a lot of your favorite YouTubers, man, you can just, like, I I, I can go back and look at all my favorite YouTubers and their OG original content and videos, and sometimes you just find you just find gems, man. You just you just find all these old videos. Like I remember, I was talking w- uh, with a friend not too long ago about Smosh, and Smosh. Like I mean, they're they're not really they don't really exist much anymore um, in the way that they used to. But Sometimes it's fun to just go back and binge all their old videos because, the, you know, you used to watch them when you were a kid. You haven't seen them in years. And then you you go back and watch them and you end up getting stuck watching these videos for hours. 
And then you go to like their second channels. I remember like I used to grind Smosh's second channels because they would do all the the mail openings from all over the world. They'd be constantly opening cool things from different places uh, on this planet Earth, and you'd get to see some cool stuff, cool drawings people would make in different styles. My my favorite ones when they would when people would send food and they would eat it on the show or on their little mail on opening or unboxing all their mail. But yeah, so go if you and if, even if you're watching some YouTubers now that you recently discovered, why don't you go back and look at some of their all of their old stuff and and see how you like it? Because uh, I mean, if you're a big fan of this show, you can't really do that with me because I deleted all of my old stuff and made that all made that stuff all private. Because to be honest, I'm not a whole not not super. Uh, it's not that I'm not proud of all that old stuff, but it's just not the content that I wanted to make, and it's not stuff that I. That defines the genre of what we're doing now. Um, so you can't really go and find my old stuff. Um, but do it for your favorite YouTubers, like people like PewDiePie and, and uh, uh, a lot of a lot of very popular YouTubers. And go back and look at all their old stuff. I, I watched Cody Ko's like, second channel vlogs uh, from years and years and years ago. And they are so funny, man. They're so funny. Him and his group of friends all have just like a very similar sense of humor and... Uh, they're all very funny. Shout out to Cody Ko. And his old videos are all great. Alrighty. Why don't we hop into today's episode? So, uh, this one, uh, as, as again, comes from the main Ask Reddit page. What's a trade secret you know from working in your industry? Now, we're going to go over some secrets, everybody. We're going to go over some uh, some secrets. And I don't know if this comes from working in my industry um, but this kind of, it kind of is mentioned. I don't really work exactly in this industry. Well, I do work in this industry, uh, now, but, the, but there's a couple things I can say, but, uh, one of them was when you, because I went to school for music production and when you learn how a lot of modern music is made, it kind of ruins it for you because you like, especially like when I went to school, because I was a big fan of hip hop music all throughout high school and modern hip hop music. And when I learned, excuse me, huh, when I learned like uh, about how a lot of a lot a lot of modern hip hop music is made, it kind of ruined it for me because it's actually like very very simple, and that's some of the reasons why a lot of modern mu- music producers don't really like a lot of the modern hip hop music because it's it's a lot of it, a lot of it, and a lot of guys who have gotten become really successful have become really successful, and not the greatest quality of work. You know what I mean? The uh, a lot of the music is is I don't want to say made cheaply, but um, maybe it's not. There's not a whole lot of thought or or, or uh, original idea going into a lot of the process. A lot of it's just copy and paste certain things that other people do on the internet, and then you kind of just learn how to do that, and then you become a producer, which isn't really accurate because a lot of times people aren't really creating a whole lot of stuff. They get they just you know go to the internet, find a bunch of different loops, slap them together, and that's their song, and now they're a producer. It's like well, you know. They didn't actually write any of the music. They didn't, you know, choose the key of the music. They just kind of, you know, put slapped it all together. Um, and it's ridiculously easy to put, like, drums, like, on modern hip-hop drums in anything. Like, it's just kind of breaks it down for you. Um, all right, so this first one comes from WMNPLZR. So, women, woman pleaser. Wow, okay. Um. <laughs> if you sh- ship through FedEx Express, if you're sending many packages slash envelopes to a single stop, ship one priority overnight and the rest standard, they will be delivered together with the priority packaging. Uh, we have a reply from Mike Feds or Mike FD3S. Uh, Express courier here. This is on point. I hate having to double back to a stop. So if I see a business priority and three or more standard, I get giddy because I can do that stop as one instead of two separate stops. Wow. Okay, guys. So now you know. Now you know how to save money on shipping, my friends. How to save money on shipping. Maybe I can give, a, this reminds me, maybe I can give a little bit of tip tips to all my Canadian friends or even just friends uh, who are living internationally outside of a place uh, that we like to call the United States of America. I know most of you uh, American listeners, most of the, my most of my listeners are from America, which I love all of my American listeners. I don't care where you're from. I love you as a human on this globe, on this planet, no matter where you reside. However, the stuff 
we have to ship from America is so expensive to get across our borders, man. You guys have it so, so easy. You can buy just almost anything you want right from America, and you can get it because your dollar is, you know, the, the world's, you know, dollar uh, and the most, like, valued currency. Uh, you guys get things for so much cheaper than we, we can get it in our own country. So if you're from Canada... A quick way to maybe save some money on some duty and taxes is there's some places that you can order. So if you order a place, if you order from a place in the states, there's websites that you can use that give you a warehouse in the states to ship your product to, and then at that warehouse they will repackage your item and ship it to you as a personal item instead of a uh, exported sales item. So that way you don't have to pay all that duty and taxes because if it's a personal item, you don't have to pay all the duties and taxes that you would have to pay if it was crossing the border. So get it shipped to a warehouse, use that as the billing address, and then uh, or the shipping address. And then get them, there's a, it's like a repackaging service. So it gets just to this warehouse, they repackage it for you and then ship it as a personal item. I don't know if this still works for people, but uh, last I checked, it works. And uh, it saves you like paying almost $100 extra. And then when you have to do the conversions, man, the Canadian dollar is it's not faring so well against your American dollar. So we end up having to pay a lot more for uh, for goods from america okay next one uh comes from sim janes 2k a resistor is made in japan it is wrapped in plastic and shipped to michigan it's installed into a small pcb it is wrapped in plastic and shipped to taiwan that pcb is installed via sideboard connector into a larger pcb and is shipped to china that pcb is installed in a small housing via a uh, harness it is shipped to india that housing uh, has its microchips programmed and the outside is given to a chemical treatment. Uh, it is shipped back to Michigan. The housing is now treated and installed into a car side mirror. It is shipped to Ohio. The side mirror is run through a post-production sort program to check for defects. It is shipped to Detroit. It is installed onto a car. Every single step of the shipping, every single component is wrapped in plastics. Millions of uh, of them per car to over half a dozen locations each. Uh, each something like fifty million cars are produced each year. Your straws aren't doing shit for the use of plastics, automotive production, and diagnostics engineer. That's crazy, man. We have a reply from Fresh and Gritty. Um, we learned about this in high school, and that the teacher and that and that teacher was criticized for his curriculum. He was literally the only adult to take time and risk uh, for information he knew was critical for us. From simple tax advice to starting small businesses to securing small loans to not getting ripped off on car insurance, all this stuff and none of it was ever part of his daily lesson plan. Man, this stuff is gold information to learn, especially like people people don't know uh, how to fix problems they aren't aware exist right so like i mean i think it's a lot easier nowadays because information is you can find it on the internet a lot of people are getting especially in the gen z sort of demographic a lot of people are very are trying their best to be informed about issues because they see a lot of it on social media or go out of their own way to find out um a lot of current events and current issues that we're dealing with but prior to this time and it's not perfect but prior to this time it was hard for people to actually find information like this on their own and it's stuff that you just have to kind of live through and, li and if somebody tells you about it then uh then you now know but these are the important issues facing our society everybody uh these you know we talked about this today in my philosophy class um about how how much waste uh, happens and the majority of waste happens because of large corporations and not because of the individual not not but it doesn't detract from the fact that you should uh, be more uh, considerate when we're talking about trying to save uh, or lower your own car particular carbon footprint but at the same time we have to be able to criticize uh, the the larger uh, corporations and structures in our society that are contributing to all of the uh, and most of the pollution that's happening. So, my friends, 
This next reply comes from Danton59. We had one of those at my high school, and he got forced into early retirement. Students were incredibly upset. He would have had a, he would uh, he would have special lesson days, going over how credit card companies would soon be trying to uh, screw us over uh, the moment we turned 18 or set foot in college, and how bad the interest rates would be. Other basic life skills like figuring out where we could get roadside assistance from. Uh, if we didn't learn to change tires, differences in insurance on cars, some diet Ramsey stuff, like having an emergency fund in a separate account. We need more teachers like him, not less. This is how the system is trying to oppress us, folks. This is exactly how it happens. It's repressing information like this. Uh, this in type of information is so critical for people to learn because it helps us make more informed decisions as we go about our lives and discover and dismantle the uh, uh, repressive uh, structures that lie in front of us. You know, how can we learn to to uh, criticize these systems if we don't know the mechanism behind these systems, right? Like if, a lot of times you ever go someplace and you feel like you're getting screwed over, but you don't really know the intricacies of how you're getting screwed over. It's when you, it's when the veil is taken off, you know? It's when you actually learn what goes on behind the scenes, and you're like, no, this is messed up, and this absolutely can change. So, uh, yeah, let's get let's get the teachers hired back. Let's get these people uh, put back in positions of, of uh, influence, man, and, and power. Uh, I feel like I'm being very... Uh, uh, this is, I'm not trying to make this an activist podcast, but uh, it is labeled society and culture. And my friends, this is society, man. This is culture, man. This is society, man. We got to deal with these problems, man. These fundamental issues out there. I don't want that to detract from the actual problems, but my friends, yes, you are being screwed. Don't let yourself be screwed. Next one comes from uh, Acme Jid. Jesus, oh my goodness, Acme Jadidad. We actually did find and file that bug in your favorite video game. Our leadership just decided it was okay to ship with it. Reply from Adelheid. In addition to that, we actually did test and balance the game to a specific difficulty. When you play it and say, did the devs even test this game? The answer is, yes we did. And that it uh, and that is the behavior slash difficulty we expected to be best. Sometimes we get it wrong. Most of the times we get it right. Most of the times we've got it right, but you don't take notice because you're having fun. But also sometimes the person who does the balancing of a specific feature slash mechanic is at that point uh, far too good at the game to realize they may have made something too difficult. Man, two things here, man. Two things here. First of all, me and my roommate the other day, we were trying to play that uh, Cuphead and Mugman game because it lo it like it kind of looks like Mario Brothers and it's got this cool sort of um, th 30s Disney aesthetic to it. So it, like the like Looney Tunes sort of uh, cartoon style, and there isn't really a whole lot of games out there like that. So we wanted to try this game. This game is so hard. <laughs> It is actually designed. I didn't. We didn't like. I didn't know this beforehand. But this game is designed to be hard to play. So we're like trying to figure out all the controls. Not number one. They're not very intuitive. Like they they're not they're not like your typical Mario Brothers. Not only that, but in order to beat the levels, so like every time every time you go to like a a spot on the map where you have to like beat the game or beat beat the beat whatever you know level you're you're trying to play. There's an easy mode, or a learning mode, and then there's like a hard mode. Or I guess like an easy mode and regular mode, I guess what it's called. You have the only choice between those two options. Once you're done the, the sort of easy mode, that doesn't do shit for you. You're, not, you're actually technically, technically not allowed to pass the level until you do the normal, the normal mode, which is hard as hell. This game was unbelievably difficult. It's actually for people who play video games, and we sucked. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm terrible at video games, man. I don't really play video games like that, so I'm like, I'm like trying to figure this thing out. I'm like, how do you shoot? Where's the... Well, no, it's the other button for the... Oh, it's the joystick for the... Oh, the... Man, let's just watch TV. Let's just play Better Call Saul. I mean, let's just let's just watch the rest of Better Call Saul, please. Can we just 
can we move on office maybe the office can we watch some episodes of the office yeah i was terrible at that not only this too but um we also played call of duty zombies like called black ops 2 and i'm like i do not remember this game being that hard we didn't even get past like past like the fourth or fifth round on the easy mode we died every time at like the third round when it went as moderate difficulty this is ridiculous man they're trying to make these zombies harder to kill it's like it's like they're trying to prepare you this prepare pre prepare this for you in real life it's like no we have to make it hard because when the zombie apocalypse inevitably comes you got to be prepared man you get you just got to be prepared you gotta you gotta this is this is this is do or die folks we're setting you up to be able to survive, all right? The Walking Dead is going to happen. This is some real life reality type stuff, all right? And if you can't handle that, I'm sorry, man. You just can't cut it. You're just gonna die. You're 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 bound to die if you can't pass the fourth round Call of Duty Zombies Black Ops Two. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you're basically screwed for life. You might as well just end it all now. I'm sorry, man. The apocalypse is inevitable. Just a joke, guys. Please don't end it now. Just because you lose and you suck at Black Ops 2. Call of Duty Zombies. Next one comes from AAMB Daw. If you want to book a rental car, but they're sold out, book it for a week or two, or two longer than you actually need it. And then just return the car early and you'll only get charged for the time that you had it. All the systems owned by Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Alamo, National... Uh, automatically open up their system to a long-term reservations and will make sure you get a car over someone who only booked in for a day or two. Worked there for two years. It's a dirty business, but at least I learned a lot of rental hacks, LMAO. So basically, uh, if you want to rent a car, rent it for longer than you're saying you're going to rent it for. And don't feel bad about it, all right? Whip that car around. Take that, take that, take that car off for a little spin. You know what I'm saying? Do a little Tokyo drifts, if you know what I mean. Take pictures in that car too to make sure that you don't get screwed over in case you know someone else has it after you and they tried to pin it on you or something. I don't know. Or it was damaged beforehand. You didn't care about it, and then they blame the, the damage on you. Uh, make sure you know what you're getting into, folks. Next one comes from Sweet Awakening. Most electronic medical medical records allow providers to pop up warnings in your chart if you act verbally or physically aggressive. If you yelled at the ER nurse in 2017, the medical assistant you called today, begging for a last-minute appointment, can see it. So we have a, ne a next reply from Charcuterie. It comes up as aggression warning. We can also see if you are an elopement risk high fall risk, or on suicide precautions. Uh, elopement risk means you're going to run away. Lots of ER banners. Damn, guys. I'm just trying to remember all the times I've ever gone to a hospital. What if they just don't like you? What if it's just like smelly feet? Long, abnormally long toenails. <laughs> Tell them to please keep, at all cost, please keep patients' shoes on at all time. You will thank me later. Patient has smelly, I don't know, anything. I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of people that I know going to the emergency room. I have smelly feet. I really have, really have just the worst Smelling feet. I'm sorry, guys. It's just actually bad. <laughs> and I, I wash my feet. Probably not as much as I should. Because they're a forgotten part of my body. But that is me. So I wouldn't be surprised if I got that uh, If I got that, that one. Or um, like I've got a nut allergy and I went into the hospital one time because I was having an anaphylactic reaction. And I wonder if the hospital, if I wonder if the, the nurse at the ER was just like, couldn't handle a little peanut butter. LOL. Lamau. <laughs> Couldn't handle a little bit of peanut butter. Lamau. What a wuss. Something like that. Like, 
fine. I'm fine. It's whatever. I don't care. I don't even care. Whatever. It's fine. I can handle it, probably. Give it to me. Just kidding. Um, next one comes from Santo Chavo. On any piece of machinery, if the welds you see look like shit, the welds you don't see are even worse. All right, uh, Michael. So um, we're really uh, sorry uh, that uh, you got into this terrible car accident and uh, and now you uh, you've lost ability to walk. So uh, you got to use this wheelchair. But we just built this new wheelchair ramp for you here at work. Um, you know, you know, Jim in the back, he made it for you. So yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's great for you to be able to come into work still. Um, you said Jim made this for me. Yeah, yeah, he made it for you. Yeah, it's really it's really good. Yeah, it's really nice of him, don't you think? Yeah, I don't know if I want to drive my wheelchair on that ramp. I don't know about it, but it looks like if I put any weight on that whatsoever. I'm going to die. No, it's fine. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's fine. He, Are you seriously not appreciating what he made for you? Really? Really? Now you have to drive it up. Now you have to drive this thing up that ramp. How ungrateful are you? I'm sorry. I'm ungrateful. I literally just don't want to die trying to drive my wheelchair up this ramp. Jeez, guys. Check your welds, folks. You don't want to be the one who's uh, fallen through a, a metal ramp someone made for you because it's trying to, they're trying to be nice, but it turns out they were just trying to get it done quickly because everyone at the office was pressuring them to get the job done. And they were just like, I have work to do, but oh no, Michael's in a wheelchair now. Or maybe, maybe just Jim just hates you and he wanted to purposely build this ramp so that you would fall through the second your wheelchair touched it. Alrighty. Next one comes from uh, Prisoner V. Casinos don't need to cheat. We all we have already rigged the game against you. Uh, reply from you are adult, which is OP. Uh, funniest thing I ever heard from a bookie is that all his clients will tell you at the end of the year that they're about even. Oh, yeah? Then how did I just afford this BMW, he'd say. <laughs> we have a reply from Hagrid's Butt Crack 66. You gotta love the gamblers who are always who always win. Oh, one of my friends would talk about her friend who always wins. Uh, I'm like, you mean the dude living with his parents in his 30s who's put himself on the do not let me in the casino list twice. Yeah, gamblers only tell you when they win. Reply from Finbar McBride. People also have their own definitions of winning. So uh, I know someone who goes to a casino regularly and always somehow comes away as a winner. When I asked some questions, it became clear that they had a very loose definition of winning. In their mind, since they expected to lose all the money they took with them, if they came home with any money, they sincerely considered it as having won money. So if they went in with $300 and came out with 50 bucks in their minds, they won 50 bucks. They didn't see it as a $250 loss. Great news, guys. I spent all my money. Shout out to Troy. <laughs> Gotta love those gamblers, though. What a racket, man. What a fun time. You never had a fun time like you have with the guy who just gambles all his money away. You know, but uh, you got to take those wins, man. Wins and losses as they come, bro. Man, you, you just can't get too caught up in the W's and the L's, bro. You just, you can't get caught too caught up in the numbers, man. If you win at a game, that's a W, bro. That's a W. Yeah, but you lost your last five. You spent a thousand dollars. You won 10 bucks. But see that though? This is why you're never going to win in life, man. Because you don't have the winning perspective. You don't have what it takes to keep going. 
When the going gets tough, you see that as a loss. I see that as winning, my friend. This is why you're not successful. This is why you'll never be as successful as me. Because you don't have the guts to do what it takes to win. Do what it takes. You just put a mortgage down on your house, man. You just took out $50,000 in loans to the bank for a business that doesn't even exist. You got to do what you got to do, man. That's the grind, bro. That's the grind. You got to you got to figure out how you're going to how you're going to make ends meet, man. How else are you going to figure out the way to keep going? To go even harder when things get tough. <laughs> to lose even more money. We have a reply from uh, Bistildevi. I used to have a gambling problem. I remember one night I went to the casino with $5,000. I played for around four to five hours. I left with $5,000. In the moment, I felt like a loser because I left with the same amount of money that I walked in with. In truth, I was at least okay because I didn't lose any money then. In reality... I enjoyed my time there and left with the same amount of money I walked in with, so I'd call that a win. But I used to justify going back the next day and losing that same $5,000 and then pulling out another five k and immediately losing that too. <laughs> I used to be very dumb. Now I'm just marginally dumb. Well, I didn't lose all my money today, but tomorrow, man, whoo, tomorrow doesn't even know what's coming, bro. Tomorrow doesn't even know what's up, bro. I'm about to break the barriers, bro. I'm about to break that seal. The diamonds are right behind that wall. And one more swing from my axe, it's a diamond mine for me. Every day that I come in here and lose, I'm just swinging a little farther, getting closer and closer to the diamonds. All right, that's the mentality you got to have. If you leave and you quit, when you're down $500,000 and you can't feed your family or your kids, you can't put your kids through school, you can't buy them anything, you can't support your family, that's the moment you got to go even harder, man. That's when you got to bet it all. Everything you've ever had, everything you've ever wanted, your future assets, screw it. Lay your kids down on the line. Use your children as assets. And keep on gambling. Because when that... Whew, when that sweet wind hits you... Sheesh! You're going to be telling the whole block about how you put a down payment on your kids. And that it was the best decision you ever made in your life. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. And that's the end of my TED Talk. How I bet my kids... And still lost three fingers because I haven't owed anyone my money back. Please, someone help. I'm begging you. I'm really having trouble right now. <laughs> All right. Um, next one comes from Opstapa327. The urine pregnancy test you take at the doctor's is the same one as the one you buy from the Dollar Tree. Um, we reply from GPX PMPHP. You can buy them on Amazon in bulk packs of 50 for $7. May have gone up since I bought mine, but I haven't had to buy another since. All right, guys. Get those. Why, why do you need to go to the doctor to see if you're pregnant, man? Use the same one as the dollar store, bro. The dollar store's got you. Dollar Store's got everything that you need. Pregnancy test. You got the 9-in-1 motor oil, shampoo, conditioner, uh, chicken grease, olive oil. You got to go for the 9-in-1. Nothing less. Don't settle. Don't settle for less. All righty. Uh, next one, and this will probably be the last one that we talk about here, uh, comes from Madison Pear Garden. Having a crew that can pass a drug test is not the same as having a drug-free crew. Uh, <laughs> reply from Tweaking for Jesus. 
when one guy can pass a drug test, everyone can pass a drug test. <laughs> uh, Gibbon the Gremlin says, my last job I got randomly drug tested three times in that many weeks uh, as the company I worked for was more than 98% certain I was the only worker out of the nine guys running the whole processing plant that could pass the test. Uh, reply from Traveler19395. That happened to me in high school sports. The coaches can submit suggestions of who to randomly drug test. They knew I was a good kid, and they were trying to make sure they didn't lose other players who likely wouldn't pass. It's like you're only on the team so you can pass the team drug test. All right. Cornelius, it's your moment to shine. Am I starting coach? Did I finally get the position? I've been working so hard for this. Oh, Cornelius. I like your style. I like your style. I like your jazz, you know? You got a lot going on there, kid. But no. The odds that you'll ever start for this team are extremely slim. We have five guys going D1. Everyone else is going to go D2. You, Cornelius, are special. Every team needs someone like you. Please, coach. Oh, I just want to be the kicker. Just let me kick the ball. I've been playing soccer for 10 years, coach. I can kick the ball. Cornelius, Cornelius, please, please save it. I have an even more important job for you. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to piss in this little cup here. And now I might, I know you might be thinking, coach, how is this helping the team? But Cornelius, you're doing the biggest favor anyone can do this team. This is what's going to help us win. State champs, let's go. All right, bring it in. <laughs> I never got drug tested in high school. What the hell? High school sports? That's like that's definitely an American thing. Because they got all those, you know, all the crazy universities and all that stuff. That was not even close to being a thing in my high school drug test. If anyone got drug tested on our team, I, I think everyone would be like, you're definitely taking something if they have to drug <laughs> drug test you. Yeah, you're 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 clearly on something to the point where it's too obvious. And now they have to do something about it. Um, and that is the last one we'll go through today, folks. So I want to thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Reddit Asks Us. I'm your host, Luke Dick. Uh, remember, answer this question on my YouTube channel. Reddit Asks Us, uh, what's a trade secret you know from working in the industry? Um... Whether that, that you work fast food, whatever it is that you work, wherever position it is that you do, uh, what is a trade secret that you have discovered uh, upon and how has that affected you? So uh, remember, that I'll be answering those uh, comments next week on the YouTube channel um, and on the podcast. So without further ado, um, this is Reddit Ask Us, where we read and react to comments from r slash ask reddit. I'm your host, Luke Dick. Remember, to, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, make sure to comment, and to subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, make sure to leave us a rating, and also please leave us a review. Uh, that helps so much to get the show spread. Um, and without further ado, I will see y'all next week. Peace out.